Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Dork Side. It is I, your friendly neighborhood dork in the garage, and today we are reviewing the fantastic, amazing quad lock motorcycle mount and phone case. Just like that, it's just locked in there. You may have heard of this product in my previous unboxing video but I've had some time with it and I really want to talk a little bit about all the features and really do a full review of this quad lock phone case and mount and also compare it to my trusty old standby RAM mount that I've had for a couple of years. So if you're not familiar with the quad lock, here are the basics. The system has two components. The first is the phone case that goes on your phone. You'll notice on the back it has the quad lock indentation. This is a pretty slick phone case. It's pretty sleek, it's pretty sturdy. I was really impressed with it when I put it on. It's pretty, I feel like it, will, it protects the phone really well without adding a ton of bolts. So that's the first component. The other component is the actual mount that goes on your motorcycle. But they also make mounts for cars. They make mounts so you can use it like as a selfie camera. They make mounts that go on your armband if you're jogging. They make bicycle mounts, but we're primarily concerned with the motorcycle version. So this is the motorcycle handlebar mount for the quad lock. This is the locking lever. These come in different colors so they're traditionally blue but this is the black one that I just swapped out super easy so I just leave it on there for demonstration purposes you'll see the other one later when we look at the other half of the mount the premise of this mount is that it's incredibly secure and also incredibly convenient to demonstrate this is how much time it takes to put your phone on Bam, it's done and it is very secure very secure so secure that I can move the motorcycle just holding onto the phone. I can even set it up and hold on to it, which I feel like is pretty impressive. That's secure, that's on there for sure. So I feel very confident about the security of the mount, honestly. And the other great thing about it is that it's super fast. So it's on right now, you just push back on the lock, off. You can do it horizontally or vertically. So here's the horizontal configuration. Several different configurations. So the phone case itself, they're around $30. This mount here, this is the motorcycle mount, it's $50 if you buy it by yourself. They also make a ball mount adapter that goes into your existing RAM mount into this unit, which is really, really cool. That's only 30 bucks. Or they make a mount that actually goes on your mirror right here, it just attaches. Or you can buy them in a package. So you can get the motorcycle mount with the case for $70. You can get the RAM mount adapter, the ball mount adapter for 60 bucks with the case. So these lock levers if you want to change out your color those are ten dollars each they also have what they call the poncho which is this uh, super slick weatherproof case that covers up your phone still enables you to use the buttons but uh, you could ride with this thing in a downpour I feel like ideal for dual sporting or if you ride in bad weather but that poncho comes over the top and you can still use the touch screen so you could conceivably use your navigation in the pouring rain or keep this on your dual sport bike all day no matter what's going on and you would be in good shape. I don't need it at this moment. It's not raining in this garage. So that's the setup. Here's the ball mount adapter, by the way. So you just remove the top of the RAM mount and stick this in, and you can use your existing RAM mount arm and just snap your phone onto it. We'll we can take a look at that a little bit later. To mount it to your motorcycle, it's not that much different than anything else you would mount to your bike. Uh, you have to take this base plate unit. It comes with a couple adapters for various bar sizes, and you just find a spot on your bike and tighten it down. It's not rocket science. I will say that I had a little bit of trouble finding a spot that would work vertically, work horizontally, and also give me enough room to put on and remove the mount, and not hit my tank when I turned the bars. So I played with it a little bit, got it in a place that I like. Installation was a little bit more complicated than, uh, say, a RAM mount, because with these RAM mounts you can just loosen it and put it anywhere you want, right? So it's not as it's not as necessary that you get it exactly in the right place, but there are other trade-offs with the RAM mount. My favorite things about this mount, first of all, it's very sturdy. Like I said, you just saw me pick up the bike holding on to my phone. So I have no qualms about this thing coming off even if I'm riding on uneven terrain. I would totally use this in the woods while I'm riding my bike. The case uh, is very sleek. Like I said, it fits the phone really well. It, it has, you have access to everything you need to have access to, and it's not very thick which is nice. So it doesn't add a ton of bulk to your phone. It's actually a lot less bulky than the case I had on here before. My favorite, my absolute favorite thing about this case and the thing that's, that's making me really, really love this whole system in general is this. I'm gonna put my phone on one-handed and I can take it off one-handed, okay? I can't do that with my RAM mount at all. And this is how long it takes. On, off. You wanna do it horizontally? Okay, on. You want to take it off horizontally? Okay, it takes a little bit longer just because the thing's behind it, but bam, it's off. Okay, let's just compare that to putting your phone in the RAM mount. RAM mount one, you can't do it one-handed. You just can't. I've tried. I mean, unless you're some kind of hand contortionist, it's just not possible 
to put it in there one-handed. It isn't, it just isn't, so forget about it. How long does it take to put in the RAM mount? Well, you gotta squeeze the thing, and then you put your phone in, and you slap it down, which doesn't take that long, to be honest, but I always feel like, especially if I'm riding off-road, I need this rubber thing. It takes longer, it's not significantly longer, but it's enough. It's enough to slow it down to the point where it's way less convenient, especially when you're just hopping off your bike to run inside and grab something, or like me, you're riding in the woods and you wanna take a bunch of pictures, I constantly have to put my butt, put my phone in, take it out, take a picture, open this thing up, put it back, hope it's not hitting the volume knobs because that happens. Slap this bad boy back on and keep riding, okay? As opposed to just with the quad lock, which holds just as securely in my opinion. Just taking it, slapping it on there, right? I'm getting better at finding the lock the first time. That is one huge advantage of the quad lock. One-handed, really, really quick operation, and that's why I like it a lot, and spoiler alert, I think it's gonna be my new phone holder. Some disadvantages, one thing I really didn't like, or it wasn't even a not like, it was just kind of disappointing, is how hard it is to find a position. This mount arm is not very long. I tried to put it here, and I had it down too far, and it was hitting the tank. I tried to put it up here, but I couldn't get enough room around it, and that's the thing. Not only do you need a good space where your phone looks good on your bike, but you need enough space to ensure that you can get it at the angle and then snap it on, right? And if you want to take it off, you got to be able to turn it, and it's the same if you want to go the other way. You need enough space to be able to snap it on and off. So it can be hard to find a position on your bike where you can do that and also be able to see the phone. It's blocking my speedometer, as you can see. It's not the end of the world, but it also still blocking Captain America, which I think is the worst part, honestly. It's not like a RAM mount where it doesn't really matter where I put the ball because I can put my mount anywhere I want, right? It can go anywhere, and then this thing turns too. So you have a lot more options, I feel like, with the ring. I don't think that's a deal breaker, though. I just think you just gotta find a really good spot and then leave it there. The one thing you're gonna wanna know, the question, the burning question on everybody's mind, how does it compare to the RAM mount? Both of these mounts are very confidence inspiring. Both of these mounts are very secure. I don't worry that I'm gonna lose my phone. I'd have to wreck my bike so bad that the phone would be the last thing I'd be worried about for it to come out. So they both hold very securely. Don't sweat that at all. The RAM is more versatile and easier to position, as I mentioned. The RAM is, as I mentioned, slower to use and harder to use. The RAM mount definitely is less convenient. So if that's a concern of yours, especially if you're only like riding in the city or you're using your phone for navigation a lot or you're on and off the bike a lot, I would definitely highly recommend the quad lock for sure. So one, which mount is better? Well, uh, in almost every circumstance, I feel like the quad lock is a better mount than the RAM mount. I will be switching personally from the RAM mount to the quad lock. I'll be using the quad lock pretty much all the time. Now, if you don't like the case, the quad lock case, or uh, you need just a little bit of versatility to be able to move your phone around, then the RAM mount is a good choice. The RAM mount is not cheaper enough to make me not recommend the quad lock in lieu of it, for sure. But I feel like the best combo, the best way to do this, like the absolute best case scenario is the best of both worlds. Because this is the ball mount adapter for the quad lock, okay? And if you have a RAM mount already, you can take your, RAM, your X grip, if you have an X grip, you can take it off, and then you take your, your ball mount adapter, put it in there, put that back on your bike in the exact same place, and then you get the best of both worlds because you get the versatility and the movement of the RAM mount but you get the convenience of the quad lock, right? One-handed. But I can put this wherever I want. If you're in the market for a mount and you're not like hugely concerned about a 10 or $20 difference, here's what I would do. I would order the base. These bases are cheap. I'd order this arm. These arms are about $10 and I would order the kit. The kit with your phone and the case and the ball mount adapter I would get that. And then you get the best of both worlds. You get a fully articulated, secure, highly secure and convenient mounting system for your motorcycle. It's a great mount, it's a great product and I highly recommend it. If you have any questions about the quad lock mount, please don't hesitate to ask them. I'm gonna leave links in the description so that you can find all of these pieces and order them for yourself. As a bonus, I'm gonna show you a little bit of footage of me riding with this quad lock mount and the ram mount arm off road on my bike, just so you can see how little the phone actually moves. Got my phone securely fastened into the quad lock mount and we are gonna do just a little bit of off road riding. Just so you can see how secure it is. As you can see, it's very secure. The mound is not moving at all. We hit all these bumps, no problem. If this mount wasn't secure, 
this phone would not stay in place period and as you can see it's not going anywhere let's just go cross country to prove it this isn't even a road this is just virgin territory that we're invading so i can show you how good this mount really is i think it's very very good and you should definitely consider adding one of these mounts to your motorcycle thank you for watching and as always please do not forget to be excellent to each other thank you excellent